Ever shake on a deal and call it good? Well, not so fast. MTN Investigates is looking at what's at stake when it comes to verbal contracts, and we're introducing you to a Montana woman who was at risk of losing her home because of an honest agreement she made with her renter to eventually buy her home. But the deal went south. Here with a look at the story is Chief MTN's Chief Investigative Reporter Andrea Lutz. Thanks for joining us, Andrea. So let's just jump right in. This story sounds uh, complicated. What is exactly going on here? It is a complicated one. So this is basically what happened, and it's a deal that I think a lot of people in Montana have probably made themselves. Anyway, uh, a woman, uh, a Laurel woman, Cheyenne Kraft, she's a single mom. She has a home, and she was going through a divorce and kind of having some financial issues. So she said, you know what? Hey, I'm going to have my friend move into the house. He's going to rent it, and he eventually wants to buy the property. So he'll take over the mortgage payments and buy it from her. Well, that's when things got a little bit hairy. The mortgage uh, financing never came through. Eventually, those mortgage payments even stopped. Her credit was on the line. So she said to her friend, you know what? I can't have you in my house. I'm going to need to evict you. Well, that's when that renter decided to file a lawsuit against her for breach of verbal contract. Wow, a very interesting story. So does a verbal contract really even hold up in a court? Well, in some cases, they might. In this case, it is so far. You know, you make a verbal contract, someone decides they want to mow your lawn, probably that's not going to go anywhere. You shake on it and it's a done deal. But there are certain limitations that have to be in place for a verbal contract to really hold up. So basically, if you do have a real estate transaction, if you're trying to sell a good for over $500, it really has to be in writing for it to really go anywhere. It's a it's a common law practice. It's known as the statute of frauds. But in this case, a Carbon County judge is actually holding this suit and, and holding it up, saying that that verbal contract hinged on some text messages that the pair made. Okay. So. Wow. Very interesting. So it really is a he said, she said case. It always is in these sort of situations, and that's really how we're going to kind of dive into that issue in my investigation, hearing from a real estate lawyer and expert and in contracts like that, when actually this actually goes somewhere, uh, can you really win it? Are you always going to lose it? Those are kind of the questions we're going to dive into. But as far as this pair and this lawsuit, it is moving forward. They recently went through mediation, and there is a trial that's already set for early March. So in this case, we're learning a lot about verbal contracts. All right. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much, Andrea. And Andrea's story airs Sunday at 10 p.m.